And what I want to know is why we're not actually investigating real family corruption. They want to attack President Biden's family, who actually did never worked in the White House, which is incredibly hypocritical. Yet we, have we haven't yet talked about these guys that actually worked in the White House. Now, we do know today that we're, that we're not here because of any wrongdoing of President Biden, but because this is all part of Donald Trump's campaign. And his most extreme allies, including some members of this committee, are now retaliating. In fact, some members have been trying to impeach the president since day one. Now, this is a, a tweet here. I'm going to read it. It says, two years ago, I introduced articles to impeach Joe Biden on his first full day in office. We will impeach Biden, bolded with an exclamation point. And you see the actual resolution here. So we, we have the receipts to prove it. There really is no reason why. They don't care why they want to impeach the president, but they've been trying to do it now for years. Here you have, of course, a member of this oversight committee posting about introducing articles of impeachment on President Biden's very first day in office. And now the Speaker of the House is empowering these people in a desperate attempt to keep his job. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to just begin by um, recapping for the American people what we've seen so far today. Uh, my Democratic colleagues have done a great job of showing that there's absolutely zero evidence linking President Joe Biden to any wrongdoing. Zero, none. This hearing is a complete waste of time, two days before a MAGA government shutdown. And we also know that Hunter Biden never held any sort of public office. And there is no evidence that he ever influenced any kind of policy in the White House. There's no evidence that he and his father's finances were ever linked. And we've spoken to many witnesses to prove that. And in fact, none of the witnesses here actually have any direct evidence that there's any sort of wrongdoing and that was repeated here um, by these witnesses. So instead, we're back to falling on MAGA conspiracy theories that Rudy Giuliani parroted over and over again. This farce is all about House Republicans trying to reelect their beloved leader, Donald Trump. They want to talk about Jared Kushner, who's right over here. We know that Jared Kushner, who's Donald Trump's son-in-law, was given enormous power in the White House. When Jared joined the White House, he was so unfit and unqualified and with so many conflicts of interest, he couldn't even get a security clearance. His father-in-law, Donald Trump, had to intervene overriding national security officials. We also know that just months after Jared left the White House, the Saudi royal family gave him $2 billion, with a B, into the Kushner hedge fund. And right now, Jared is pocketing an additional $25 million a year in fees. This is a man who was put at the head of Middle East policy in the White House. We know he personally intervened to give the Saudis a $110 billion arms deal that was opposed by, folk, by actually folks all across the government. He supported the Saudis with their brutal war in Yemen, even after they murdered Jamal Khashoggi, a journalist, of course, who was an American resident. The Saudi crown prince bragged to other heads of state that Kushner, and I quote, was in his pocket. Even Trump's first secretary of state complained that this is inappropriate. Now, Jared delivered for the Saudis over and over again, and he was rewarded. Even advisors to the crown prince advised against the $2 billion hedge fund investment, yet he went forward anyways. So we know that Jared Kushner, a senior White House aide and Donald Trump's son-in-law, was doing favors for a foreign government. Now, this is actually an enormous family scandal that this committee should be investigating. And I think Chris Christie put it well when he said that the grift from this family, the Trump crime family, in my opinion, is breathtaking. You also need, need to take my word for it. But I, this is actually what our committee chairman actually said about the Kushners. I'm just, I'm just quoting our, our chairman. I have been vocal that I think what Kushner did crossed the line of ethics. Now, Mr. Chairman, I completely agree that the Kushners crossed the line of ethics, and I want to know what we're going to do about it and when that hearing is actually going to be here in front of us. See, if we're not too busy, maybe next week during the Republican MAGA shutdown, we can actually have a hearing with Jared Kushner, which is clearly in a, in a, in a very corrupt um, arms deal here, a, a deal around his investment firm, and, I, and the chairman can also be involved in that since he also thinks it's, there's problems. Ultimately, the person pulling the strings here is Donald Trump, a dangerous man facing federal and state indictments who's out for revenge. And he's been doing this his whole career. And I want to show you a second tweet, again, by a member of this committee. They are trying to expunge Donald Trump's impeachment, as you can see here, which is also unconstitutional. I'm going to read this tweet. Expunge the wrongful Trump impeachments. Impeach criminal Biden. These are political stunts to appeal to an extremist base, and they seize control of this conference. If we don't act, 
they'll threaten our democracy again. This impeachment is a farce with no evidence, and with that, I yield back.